Welcome to Tsuji This Week. I'm Siri Su. Thank you for joining us. Tsuji's Green Ideas received approval at the International Health Promoting Hospitals and Health Services Conference. Tsuji volunteers in Xiamen, China, offer lessons on environmental awareness in Gulangyu. Tsuji volunteers in Malaysia reach out to a family struggling to pay rent and medical bills. In Malaysia, in preparation for a performance at the Malaysia Tima Conference on June 18th, more than 10 medical professionals practice drumming at the Jing Si Hall in Kuala Lumpur. Getting the moves and tempo right is a challenge for these people, but they practice hard, hoping to put on the best show at the conference. These people are not professional drummers. They are rather the medical professionals of Malaysia's Tima. For their upcoming performance at Malaysia Tima Conference held in Kuala Lumpur, these medical professionals are taking time to rehearse. Ten people showed up last Tuesday. One doctor said he could have a three-day break to come and practice. I hope our performance will be successful because we are getting better at it. Few of the drummers are women, and they are just as skillful as the men. Every beat must be very clear. It's like in your daily life. When you walk, you just walk firmly. You must do everything with both feet on the ground. It is his first time to play the Chinese drum, but he tries his best as he wants to play at the opening ceremony of the Tima Conference. Our, our Sifu used to tell us there is no... The coach didn't teach us to do Do, Re, Mi, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's a big challenge to me. I must pay attention to the loudness and the tempo. And if the timing is correct, all these are challenges to me. Every time the members always practice diligently, I'm hoping they will be able to perform perfectly at the opening ceremony of Tivma Conference. The 24th International Health Promoting Hospitals and Health Services Conference recently took place at Yale University in the United States on June 10th and 11th. Delegates from some 700 hospitals around the world, including Tsuji's medical mission, were invited to attend. Tsuji's efforts to promote greener medical practices received widespread approval from all the attendees. For the past 10 years, Tsuji Foundation's medical mission has taken part in the International HPH Conference. This year, the mission shared how they have been working to reduce medical waste in the hospitals. Managing medical waste can be tricky, especially if it is biohazard waste that has been contaminated with blood. On our part, we are working to reduce medical waste that is generated in our dialysis clinic. Participants commended Tsuji for its green ideals and looks forward to collaborating with Tsuji in the near future. Showing by example plastics recycling, green design, so we see that partnership is a really important anchor for this work. Other points of discussion included challenges faced by the medical technology industry to develop green technology. The healthcare sector is an energy intensive industry, thus we'd like to take this opportunity to raise everyone's environmental awareness. This is something hospitals should work collectively to achieve. What can we do to protect our planet? We have to conserve energy, reduce carbon emissions, recycle, reuse and remake. This is the best way to protect the Earth. The medical mission's efforts received widespread approval at the conference. Medical representatives agreed to join hands and work towards achieving greener hospitals and sustainable health care. In Taiwan, city volunteers recently went to Xizhi in New Taipei City to help a stroke victim, Mr. Yang, clean up his home. Let's take a look. A once spacious home is now filled with all kinds of garbage. The door can't be opened easily. <laughs> Mr. Yang had a stroke 10 years ago, so he has to depend on selling recyclables to make a living. Now. Only his left hand is still movable. 
and he communicates with the volunteers by writing to tell the volunteers what to do with his goods. We separated his stuff and thought to sell it for him. After we sell them, we will bring the money and the receipts back to him. He had suffered from a second stroke 10 years ago, so he can't walk. He has also had heart surgery, so his mobility is more restricted. His kids don't live with him currently, so essentially he is living alone. While the volunteers are cleaning Mr. Yang's stuff, they also separate them into garbage or recyclables. They then relay the items from the fifth floor to the first floor. Xie Yating is the youngest volunteer helping today. I didn't expect that his living condition would be this different from ours. Since we have a four-day holiday, my daughter didn't have plans, so I brought her here. I hope this teaches her to realize how blessed she is. Zhiji volunteers use the last day of the holiday to cultivate blessing. In the days ahead, they will continue to help Mr. Yang to build a relationship with his children. In Taiwan, Mr. Zhou Fang Jilong lives with his wife who suffers from spinal cerebellar atrophy and recently had a stroke. To better care for his wife, Mr. Zhou decided to quit his job, leaving their daughter as the sole provider of the family. The family of three live in an old apartment building that leaks. Fortunately, it's the volunteers help renovate a place in just two months' time. As soon as one steps inside Mr. Joe's home, one can see mold covering the walls and ceiling caused by the humid conditions. Each time it rains, water seeps through the ceiling of the bedroom and living room. If it rains heavily, the roof will start to leak after two days. Although Mr. Joe had wanted to repair his home, as his wife suffers from spinocerebellar atrophy and recently had a stroke, he chose to quit his job to look after his wife full-time, a decision which put the family in financial peril. She needs someone by her side. Rather than hire a caretaker, I prefer to look after her myself. Even the couple's daughter was reluctant to come home to such harsh conditions. When city volunteers were notified of this situation, they came to check up on the family and offered their assistance. We feel that Miss Jo needs a proper place to rest. If they live in a cleaner environment, when their daughter returns home from work, she'd be more willing to stay home and assist her father in caring for her mother. The leak in the roof seems to be the cause of the problem, so we're going to repair it now. Once the source of the leakage had been identified, volunteers brought in builders to have it repaired. They also helped to clean Mr. Joe's home and clear the house of clutter. Among those helping out were a group of senior bodhisattvas. Walls were repainted, doors were installed, and in just two months' time, repairs were complete with the house looking brand new again. It's clean and comfortable. If a home is comfortable, there's no reason to be depressed all the time. In the days ahead, volunteers will continue to accompany this family to bring joy and laughter back into their lives. At the invitation of the Xiamen city government in China, the Ziji Foundation was invited to the tourist district Gu Langyu to offer some lessons about recycling and environmental awareness. Ziji volunteers hope to keep people mindful about their role in protecting the environment. This picturesque environment is Xiamen, also known as the Waterfront Garden. The history and diverse architectural elements of the former concession in Gu Langyu make the area feel like an outdoor museum of international architecture. This area is less than two square kilometers, and there are less than 20,000 people living here. But since applying to UNESCO for recognition as an island of world heritage, every year this area greets over three million tourists. Along with the tourists, unfortunately, a trash problem has also emerged. <laughs> Taking precautions, the local government invited the Tsuji Foundation to establish a recycling center to increase environmental awareness among residents, businesses, and tourists. <laughs> Thank you.
We want to disseminate information about recycling and protecting the environment to help everyone better understand. Since we're in the area that produces a lot of waste, we want to do this starting now. We're giving the people hope for their environment. In the 35 degrees Celsius heat, Tsuji volunteers put on a song and dance in order to spread their message. They also walk the streets and alleys, looking for people willing to listen. We now manufacture water bottles that can't be disposed of. If those bottles get into the ground, they won't ever break down. And if you burn them, they will pollute the air. But Tsuji will collect them and turn them into blankets to make the material useful again. Tsuji people may call themselves volunteers, but actually seeing them do these kinds of things, I think they are really experts and specialists in environmental protection. They're considerate and full of love. Even when the message doesn't get through, the volunteers continue on their mission, armed with compassion and knowledge. Always moving forward, volunteers continue working with all their energy for the good of our planet and future generations. In Malaysia, Tsuji's care has been extended to Retna Devi's family of seven. Living the government projects, the family struggles to pay rent and medical expenses, as three family members are sick. Last year, Tsuji volunteers began caring for the family, helping them to fill the house with furniture, as well as covering other living expenses. Three of the members of Ratna Devi's family suffer from some sort of debilitating illness. The husband's salary as a night watchman barely covers their rent and medical expenses. Hearing of their plight, Tsuji volunteers from Penang began looking after the family a year ago. I am grateful Tsuji volunteers helped repair my home. My house had many places that leaked when it rained, and all of it was patched by Tsuji. We're very glad to receive Tsuji's financial assistance. They have helped warm up our home. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Evie. Bringing a cake, volunteers came today to celebrate the third daughter's birthday. I like my mother and father. Thank you for Tsuji. Though they live in poverty, these parents know they are blessed, and this is the most important life lesson they want to leave to their children. To support the construction of Jing Si Hao in Moor, Malaysia, local city volunteers take to the streets to encourage people to save money and donate it. They persevere even if they're rejected, with a commitment to complete the construction project. Tsuji volunteers visit each family to encourage people to take coin bags to save money so they can support the construction of Jin Si Ho in Mua. We hope everyone can come together to do good deeds every day. Are you willing to take a coin bank? You can drop five cents or a dime every day and make a kuva when you drop a coin. Even small coins can help achieve good deeds with many people responding. Even though they are rejected, the volunteers still remain positive. I felt a little low because of this rejection, but I feel that I'm doing the right thing and we must do it. Someone will be touched. Rejection is just a beginning. There's a strong force behind us, so we must keep going. I can also do the impossible. I will raise as much as I can, even if it's only five dollars. Not discouraged by rejection, the volunteers hope to inspire more to contribute their love to build a new Jin Si Ho. 
Singapore City Kindergarten has planned a series of lessons on character education, including giving these children who live in such affluence a taste of a difficult life. The teachers hope the experience will guide the children to understand what a compassionate heart entails, as well as the daily act of giving. Having just rice porridge for lunch, the students find it hard to swallow. We're introducing the bamboo bank era to the children. This lunch experience is to let them know about the plight of other children. Next, we hope they can find it in their hearts to make a difference. After learning about how unfortunate other children may be, the students then learn about the origins of Tsuji's bamboo coin bank. These mothers decided to donate five cents a day to help the less fortunate. With the containers brought from home, the students are ready to make their own coin banks. Actually, the children nowadays seem more self-absorbed and want more toys. I hope those children that come to Tsuji can learn about helping others and having the heart of compassion. In Canada, Tsuji Academies in Mississauga and Toronto celebrated graduation ceremonies in early June. The graduation ceremonies included tea ceremonies to show gratitude for the teachers, as well as song and dance performances. This is the graduation ceremony at the Tsuji Academy of Humanistic Studies in Mississauga, Canada. Students are happy as they hold their teachers' hands and prepare to make their triumphant walk. This year, there are only nine students graduating, but nearly 400 students and parents have joined the ceremony today. I learned so many things. I learned a lot of Chinese and also about humanities and filial piety to my mom and dad. Everyone is delighted to see how much these children have grown. Some students sing a song of gratitude to their mothers and fathers, while others perform using hand gestures to bestow their blessings. One teacher also received a special award in recognition of her 10 years of service. The master's Jing Si aphorisms have really changed my life and my perspective. Actually, I think I have learned the most in my life since becoming a teacher. At the Tsuji Academy in northern Toronto, the graduation ceremony is full of energy. Two representatives from the charity organization In From the Cold have also joined the event. Their organization is committed to helping the homeless on the streets make it through the cold winter months. Tsuji is one of their greatest partners, and today they are both collecting donations from the students. I'd like to express my appreciation and gratitude to all the members of the Tsuji Foundation for all the support they provide for In From The Cold. I'm so honored to be invited to the graduation. Hopefully, these graduating students will always remember the joy of helping others as they begin the newest chapter of their lives. Tsuji's U.S. headquarters began offering scholarships for students in need beginning in 1992. While the amount of money provided to each student is relatively modest, a ceremony is held each year to give them the confidence to face challenges in life. Over the long weekend holiday, Tsuji U.S. headquarters held a ceremony to honor scholarship recipients. Each Tsuji scholar wore formal dress for the ceremony, with the vast majority preparing to enter college, with these funds helping subsidize their future studies. Definitely, um, I'm working towards it, and um, I'm currently in the process of becoming a DACA student, which is the students that um, will are immigrants and come to this country for a better future. 
Beginning in 1992, Zuji's USA scholarship program for needy students was extended to those of all faiths and ethnicity. Though the amount of the scholarship is limited, an award ceremony is held to give students more confidence and prepare them for the future. I to major in international development study in UCLA, and I will also major in Spanish as well as a minor in global health. And I'm planning to, um, after I graduate from college, I'm planning to work for nonprofit organizations. Many children don't have, um, from around the world, they don't have health services, and I think every child deserves to have some type of health service in order for them to be happy and healthy and enjoy their life. Many scholarship recipients pledge to return this favor by helping others in the future. To help others to be compassionate, to be moral, to be humble, to be caring, to be loving. You light a candle of light that will brighten this otherwise dark world. The GUSA scholarship recipients are reminded to think about others and cultivate compassion, which is a priceless gift as they go forward into the world. In Hualien, Taiwan, the sixth graders of the elementary division of Tsuji Senior High School, affiliated with Tsuji University, planned a Bring Back the Love concert for the homeless. Students invited their local homeless friends to join the event, filled with musical talents as well as delicious vegetarian cuisine. Sorting the recyclables quickly and easily, this homeless person is glad to share what he knows about recycling with the students. I'm teaching them something about recycling. Actually, the students already have some basics, but they need to know further how to tell the difference between paper, plastic, PET bottles, glass or metal. I feel quite honored to be able to teach them what I know. The sixth graders of the elementary division of Tsuji Senior High School, affiliated with Tsuji University, planned a special concert especially for the homeless. They are out there facing the elements each day, living on the streets. We're very fortunate in life. If we can share our blessings with others, then that's giving to those in need. As these homeless friends are nomadic, the students had to visit multiple times in order to personally deliver their handmade invitations to these guests. We wanted the students to look around them and find out how they can help the less fortunate. Then they can take what they have learned in school and actualize their compassion and become a giver. Through this activity of caring for the homeless, the teachers hope the students will not only learn to count their blessings, but that their homeless friends also find a sense of self-worth through the act of helping the planet. The Singapore Tsuji Da'ai Educate Center recently held a Parent Day event for students to express their love and gratitude for their parents. At the occasion, children fed their parents, snacks they made, and even washed their feet. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.